Hello everyone, this is Yi Hong from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. Today I'm going to talk about our paper entitled Micromode, Enabling Passive Chirp Despreading and Microvolt Level Long Range Downlink for Backscatter Devices. Conventional Backscatter Devices, for example, WISP Platform, Inter Technology Backscatter, and Internet of Microchips benefit from microvolt level low power communication but suffer insufficient communication range of less than 20 meters in the last decade a number of css based long range backscatter techniques such as lora backscatter p lora and p2 lora significantly increase the uplink range to more than 1 km with microvolt level power. However, their downlink ranges still remain limited. Since CSS is so effective, can we achieve CSS on the downlink to extend the receiving range of low power backscatter devices? Before I answer the question, I'd like to introduce the CSS communication principle first. In brief, the basic idea of CSS is don't put all the eggs into one basket. Specifically, the information, for example, a symbol carried by a chirp is distributed to the chirp's spectrum, and hence the narrowband interference is unable to cover the entire band, even if it has a stronger signal amplitude. After despreading, the chirp is transformed to a single tone which can be easily detected. Chirp despreading involves several procedures, including amplification, down conversion, and multiplication using a down chirp signal. In these procedures, the carrier generation operation and the LNA, namely the RF amplification IC, typically consumes millivolts of power. And hence, chirp despreading and RF signal amplification operations consume millivolts of power, which is unaffordable to backsetter devices. So, the micro mode design at least faces two challenges. The first challenge is how to despread chirp to combat interference with extremely low power. And the second challenge is how to raise the signal amplitude with extremely low power. By the way, the third challenge, the third challenge will be discussed later. The solution to challenge one is passive chirp despreading method. Its basic idea is to upload the power consuming carrier generation function to the RF transmitter. In detail, the RF transmitter sends two chirps, namely chirp 0 and chirp 1. Chirp 0 is the chirp signal to be displayed, while chirp 1 plays the role of carrier signal and the displaying signal which are necessary in chirp despreading process. These two chirps will be mixed by micromode receiver. For circuit simplicity, we use RF dial as mixer. The solution to challenge two is magnifying signals by accumulating energy. Before talking about the solution, let me first introduce why existing LNA IC cannot be used in a microvolt power RF receiver. In a LNA IC, the function of signal ampli amplification is performed by the triodes. More specifically, the signal current I signal on base can be amplified by bit times and output at the emitter. However, to ensure that the triode works within the linear active region, a bias current, I bias, should be applied 
on the bass. And this I bias will also be amplified. The amplified I bias can be more than two orders of magnitude of amplified I bias, but it will be removed after amplification as it contains no data. As a result, the unused beta multiplies I bias can waste 99% of power, making the power consumption of LNAIC to be milliwatt level. Our solution is LC resonance circuit. The energy in LC circuit periodically transitions between E and M fields, thereby creating resonance. And hence, the signal energy is accumulated in the form of resonance, and the signal amplitude is magnified. However, the signal characteristics, for example, frequency, phase, and amplitude are distorted in the accumulating operation. How can the signal information be preserved? The solution is to encode data with the duration of resonance. We observe that the duration of excitation signal input to the resonator can control the duration of the resonance in the LC circuit. Therefore, as shown in the red portion of the figure, if, if the duration of the resonance is short, it can be used to represent a symbol zero. And if the duration of the resonance is long, it can be used to represent a symbol one. The third challenge is how to decode the symbol with low power. The conventional solution is to use ADC-based high-speed sampling to achieve decoding. To satisfy Nyquist's theorem, each symbol will be sampled for 80 to 120 times. Each sampling operation involves two integration operations and one amplification operation. In summary, ADC sampling typically consumes hundreds of microvolts, which can account for the majority of a backscatter device's total power consumption. If we can decode a symbol with only a single integration operation, the decoding power can be significantly decreased. The basic idea is to use an RC circuit as energy integrator to identify the energy level of symbols. Each amplified symbol will be sent to the RC circuit to charge the capacitor. The signal duration in the symbol will determine the peak voltage in the capacitor C. If the peak voltage in C is greater than the reference voltage of the comparator, the decoding result will be 1. If the peak voltage in C is less than the reference voltage, the decoding result will be 0. This figure shows the more detailed circuit design. There are actually some additional problems that need to be solved. The first issue is a dynamic signal strength problem. If the strength of the received RF signal is relatively strong, the amplitude of the amplified signal output from the resonant circuit will also become higher. Not only does the aforementioned duration of the signal affect the integration results of the RC circuit, but this amplitude also affects the integration results. To solve this problem, we set up a voltage comparator to normalize the signal amplitude. That is, no matter how high or low the amplitude of amplified signal is, it is uniformly converted to a specific amplitude. This avoids the effect of amplitude changes on the integration result. 
The second problem is the capacitor initialization. After the capacitor has completed the integration operation of the previous symbol, the voltage in the capacitor needs to be released to avoid the residual voltage from affecting the integration result of the next symbol. Therefore, we need to control a switch to release the residual voltage in the capacitor at the end of each symbol to initialize the capacitor. This leads to a third problem. How can the receiver know the exact end time of each symbol? This requires a synchronization mechanism. Normally, the synchronization mechanism is implemented by decoding leading symbols. However, in our circuit design, the precondition for decoding symbols is to implement a synchronization mechanism. Thus, we seem to be stuck in a dead loop. The solution is to change the RC value of the circuit in a synchronization period so that the circuit can detect the synchronization symbol. Specifically, we use consecutive symbol 0 as synchronization symbols, and we connect a resistor in parallel in the circuit to make the capacitor charge faster, thus allowing the synchronization symbol 0 to be detected by the threshold detector. We prototype micromote with commercial off-the-shelf components on a 2.4 cm multiplied 2.6 cm PCB. The prototypes of micromote has two versions, namely micromote and micromote minus. Micromote minus is a micromote prototype which removes the operational amplifier to save power. The prototypes can work at one 2 and 5 kbps. In the evaluation section, we use the same passive DTBS and WISP5 as benchmark. Firstly, we measure the receiving sensitivities of micro modes, prototypes, and benchmarks. When the bit error rate is less than 1%, the micro mode reaches a receiving sensitivity of about minus 48 dBm. The receiving sensitivities of WISP5, SIGN, and passive DTBS are minus 28 dBm, minus 43 dBm, and minus 35 dBm. Then we measured the practical receiving range in line of sight environments. In this experiment, the output power of RF transmitter is 30 dBm. The micromode prototype achieves a receiving range of about 400 meters, and the micromode minus prototype achieves a receiving range of about 200 meters. The re receiving range of this phi, sign, and pass digitized are centimeters, 250 meters, and 140 meters. We also evaluate the throughput of micromode and benchmarks in non-live-site environments where downlink signals penetrate one wall. We firstly evaluate the throughput of micromode different data rates. The result shows that within the communication range of 30 meters, micromode at 5 kbps achieves the highest throughput. But when the rate is increased, micromode at 1 kbps shows more robustness. We also evaluate the throughput of micromode and benchmarks at 1 kbps. WISP has the shortest range of 10 meters. At this range, the throughput is 57 packets per second. 
sign and passive device achieves communication ranges of 20 meters and 30 meters, respectively, while micro modes has a maximum range of 50 meters, and the throughput is 55.9 packets per second. We also evaluated the interference resistance of micro mode prototype and benchmarks. When faced with RFID interference and LoRa interference, both micro mode and passive DGYS show the interference resistance. Passive DGYS can communicate when the SINR is greater than 2 dB, while the micro mode prototype can even communicate when the SINR is negative. SIGN and WISP5 do not show significant interference resistance in this experiment. The contributions are summarized as follows. We, we propose the design of micromodes, a novel microvolt level receiver with hundreds of meters of receiving range, which can effectively resist interference and work even under negative SNR. We address three practical challenges we face in realizing the receiver, i.e. the passive chirp displaying, low power signal magnification, and low power decoding. We prototype micro mode with commercial off-the-shelf components and conduct extensive experiments to verify the feasibility and demonstrate the performance of our design. Thank you.